Hello and welcome to the Siesta Show. It's Monday the 27th, is it 27th, Colin? I'm not sure actually. Yeah, it's the 27th of April. And uh, we didn't come to you on Friday. Um, we weren't, myself and Colin weren't feeling very well, so we took the day off. But here we are, and I thought today we'd do a little bit of a, of a driving experience day. Um, how to drive in Spain. So join me in the car, and I'll show you what you need to know. This is a good example of like uh, a lot of the roads in Spain where you don't actually have any sort of slip road. So you approach the dual carriageway as we are here, go down to first gear, see if there's anything coming, which there is. And then basically what you've got to do is just floor it. And that's the way you come onto a dual carriageway from a standstill. <laughs> I think it was because so a lot of the old roads are just, um, they sort of, they were single lane roads and then they changed them to dual carriageways, but because there's so many sort of urbanisations and roads off the original roads, see like this guy, so he's not got a lot of slip roads come onto a dual carriageway. Um, but so as they built the roads, they couldn't really change the setup and move anything else. So a lot of the time you literally have to zoom on to the busy road from a standstill. This road is not too bad, but some roads are incredibly busy, so it's quite a dangerous thing. Now we're coming up to a roundabout. Roundabouts are uh, complicated in Spain because normally, if you want to go around a roundabout here, you would get in the left hand lane indicate, but actually, that car there, if you can see it, Colin, I mean, he's not going to go, but he theoretically, coming on around the outside, actually has priority in terms of coming around the roundabout. Oh, this guy didn't even see me coming around. I'll show you again on another roundabout. Roundabouts are a big problem in Spain. So here's a good example. So he's pulling out. He's got very, very little runoff there. He hasn't really floored it. Oh, I think maybe he has, but... Quite dangerous. I'm surprised there aren't more accidents like that actually because it's very dangerous. Especially when you get some of the lorries come in and people just pull out. They don't really floor it very much and the lorries like braking really hard trying to swerve into like the fast lane so... Now this is quite standard stuff and don't try this at home but if you want to get past somebody, ah he's moved across. All you need to do is just come up right behind them and indicate. Well, I don't recommend it. See, look here, see, look. Already hassles. <laughs> no one's sure what to do. You see, he, theoretically now, that car on the right-hand side, could actually sweep across the roundabout. And he's actually legally entitled to do that, so... Always be careful if you're in the inside lane, because somebody might cut across you as you come round the roundabout. And they have a right to do that, so... Okay, let's come off here. Alright, what you might see in Spain a lot is that if somebody wants to overtake you, don't do this at home, but this is a bit naughty. You get, they get very close to you and they start indicating that they want to get past you, see, and then it'll pull over. Because one of the things that you actually, don't do that at home. <laughs> it's a bit naughty there. Um, but one of the things here is that you don't actually get a lot of road rage. He's not sure what he's doing there, is he? You don't get a lot of road rage in Spain, I think. You know, if somebody comes up behind you, which is quite normal, they sit on your bump and they indicate they want to get past. And really all you've got to do is just move across and let them go. You know, there's no point in risking your own life or anything, so. But you don't get a lot of road rage here. If, like, the 
aggressive driving is sort of accepted in a way, you know? And people just get out of the way. If somebody's coming along and they're in a hurry and they're like flashing lights, indicating and everything, then everyone just gets out of the way and nobody gets the hump by it or anything. So, it's a more relaxed way. You know? <laughs> just let the nutters go. That's the theory. Like me, just back there. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's driving on the dual carriageway. Shall we go and park? Sorry, Colin. <laughs> You're gonna get a dizzy there. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna do it, but in Spain, when you park, bumpers are bumpers. So if you have a new car, get rid of it. <laughs> Here's have a second-hand one. People generally in Spain, when they park, they do use the bumpers. So um, my advice is, don't buy a new car like I did. It's covered in scratches already after a year. Um, but on the side, it's quite normal to get your door banged at the supermarket, for example. And um, I don't know why, but you know, sp people seem to park when they parallel park like this. The cars are very, very close together. I don't know why. And um, so obviously, it's a bumper to bumper thing as they move and maneuver out. And bumpers don't last very long here. Um, what else can I show you? I'm not sure there's anything else really I can show. What do you think, Colin? Anything else? Well, as you can see, if you want to park for free, the other one was, uh, we parked the side of the road before, but if you want to park for free, some of the car parks aren't particularly good. So, another reason not to have a new car. Anyway, so I hope that's given you a bit of insight into how to drive in Spain. Uh, we're back on Wednesday, so we'll see you then. Have a good week. Bye.